Hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Good morning. We have another minute or so for the internets to connect the people. The hamsters will run on their wheels faster. Hi. Hi Hello. Hello. Um, is it, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Rian? Uh, is, is it Rian or? Rian. 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 Okay. Cool. Uh, nice to meet you. It is confusing because most in English it is Ryan. First the I and then the A. But no, it's Rian. First the I, not first the A. Excellent. Um, while we're waiting for the last, th thank you. Um, uh, I think we may have met before, right? Uh, but, um, uh, we've been getting more and more more names and uh and um i look forward to conferences where we can meet people in person all right Vijay. so while we're while we're um while, while the remaining folks are, are joining i think nira is coming as well um to a, a presentation on a project uh for sandbox uh, i'll say this is a cncf event uh it is uh tuesday december 5th this is the the, the first tag observability meeting of the month uh, on the first, uh, they, they're on the first and third Tuesdays of every month at noon um, Eastern time. Although, based on recent feedback, we should, I think, consider um, uh, moving them to later. Uh, so, as this is a CNCF event, the code of conduct does apply. Please don't do or say anything in uh, the video or chat that would be in violation of that code. Um, so, welcome. Uh, please sign in if you haven't already. Um, uh, Alalita. Uh, is unable to join us today. She was at reInvent last week. Um, uh, and uh, so, uh, but here we are. Uh, and I see Nir has just joined. We have a fairly open agenda today. Um, uh, so if folks have things that they want to add ad hoc or talk about that are on their mind or top of mind, uh, please do feel free. It's an open agenda. Um, and as we come into the holiday here, we've got we've got a little bit of, of slack. Um, that's like, a, a, it's a lull. <laughs> Uh, between reInvent and then the holidays approaching. Um, another item uh, uh, to consider is that December 12th uh, uh, is the upcoming uh, TOC Sandbox review. So they'll be looking at all of the folks that have applied for Sandbox. Um, and we've just exited the very first uh, TOC tag meeting, which has followed a new format. Uh, rather than being uh, sort of highly structured with a, 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 a barrage of slides, uh, the slides are not being done asynchronously, and the tag chairs and the TOC have some unstructured time to actually talk about issues of the day, uh, which I think is a, is a welcome change um, and something that came out of the meetings at KubeCon. Uh, so with that, um, welcome to all those who have joined. Um, uh, hey, Bart, I, I, I noticed you also joined. We have a fairly open agenda. Uh, you're one of our TLs as, as well as Ken. Uh, do you guys have anything that you wanted to add to the agenda uh, that's top of mind for you? Uh, and uh, similarly, similarly, VJ, uh, if, if there's anything that you'd like to highlight out of the, the query standard working group, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but feel free to um, grab some time this hour as well uh, for next meeting. Uh, nothing recently, VJ. The last uh, sync up that we had was with the um, uh, in regards to PromQL. Uh, was a very informative uh, discussion. Um, we don't have anything lined up at the moment. If I'm not wrong, I'll check with uh, Chris. Um, near pop is near near so here. Yeah, oh, there you are. Sorry. Um, uh, do you want to uh, uh go now, or I can cover a couple other pieces of news first, or we could talk about some of the other agenda items, or if you're ready to go now, you could take it, take it. Uh... Yeah, sure. Sure. All right. Uh, so I made a kind of last minute presentation uh, about uh, our project. Uh, so it's not super long, but uh, I have like a couple of examples I want to show you guys. And I would love to get some feedback uh, and, and some thoughts. So let me start by presenting. Okay, so um, so open elementary, uh, it's an open source 
a set of extensions we built on top of open telemetry. Um, uh, and the idea is that we wanted to ex to use the same infrastructure of open telemetry, but to extend on the capabilities uh, to support instrumenting uh, Gen AI uh, SDKs and libraries, so things like uh, foundation models like OpenAI, Anthropic, and others, vector databases uh, like Chroma or Pinecone, and uh, frame LLM frameworks like LangChain and Llama Index. Uh, with the way we built open telemetry is to basically match what you've seen with other uh, closed source uh, observability solutions that are out there today in the LLM space. Uh, and we really wanted to use the same protocols and foundations of open telemetry so that we can uh, so that it can still connect to any platform that supports uh, open telemetry. Uh, this is more or less what we have uh, in the in the repo. We have kind of like three parts. Uh, the bottom one is the semantic conventions. So we basically built the same, like an extension of the semantic conventions we have on open, open telemetry. Uh, we built some more uh, sort of standards on how, uh, which, uh, I don't know, span attributes to use to report stuff like token usage and uh, prompts and responses. Uh, so things that are specific to to uh, LLM and GenAI usage. On top of that, we built a lot of we built uh, a lot of uh, instrumentations for things that we've seen uh, are needed. So we are now supporting all foundation models uh, like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Cohere. We're supporting uh, two vector databases, uh, Pinecon and Chroma, and we'll have more in the near future. And we're supporting. Uh, all major uh, frameworks, uh, so LangChain, Llama Index, LightLLM, and uh, Haystack. Uh, by supporting women, like we have, we have a package for instrumenting that specific uh, library. On top of that, we built uh, something we call Traceloop SDK. I'm near, I'm like, I have to present myself them the CEO of Traceloop, uh, and the idea is was that. From our experience, sometimes just using open telemetry, especially for people who have never used open telemetry or not coming from like cloud-based mobility, it's it's kind of a steep learning curve. So we we basically build like an SDK to make it super easy to to install an instrument uh, to install an instrument existing apps. Uh, a question I get sometimes people ask is uh, why is it a separate project? Why should it be like a separate project uh, and not basically just some more instrumentations built on top of open telemetry? Uh, and, and there are like three answers. They're kind of connected to each other. I'm going to start from the right one, actually. Uh, we're doing some things which are kind of like unorthodox uh, in open telemetry. So for example, we, we really wanted to attach uh, prompts and completions uh, from uh, like calls to open AI within attributes in like within attributes of spans. This is something that all other uh, LLM ops observability applications are doing. Right now doing that uh, within spans is, is kind of pro problematic. I've been trying to push several initiatives to uh, like solve how to uh, store large amounts of data within spans, but we're still like in discussions in several uh, GitHub issues. So uh, we thought it might be better to do it like out of standard. Uh, it's still the same protocol. So ev everyone can consume it, but it's something that wouldn't been, would have been, it's still not acceptable in like uh, open telemetry. Um, it's kind of related to it. We, there's, Everything is moving super fast in the last year in Gen AI domain, and we wanted to be able to uh, to move extremely fast and support everything that people wants to use open telemetry for LM observability need. And we didn't want to break or change any existing uh, definitions or, or protocols or standards in open telemetry. So we thought it might be better to uh, to start a separate project, and then at some point when everything stabilizes, maybe merge it back to, to open telemetry. Uh, and last thing, uh, we have a, we have a lot of ideas around what what more needs to be done around uh, uh, like the LLM op space and LLM observability. And 
this project can be a potential to support all of these uh, features, and I can also talk about them uh, later. Uh, so our roadmap, right now we are supporting Python and TypeScript. We want to support more languages. We got requests for Go, Rust, and Ruby. Um, we also want to work on standardizing other aspects of uh, LLM applications. Uh, I wrote like prompt management here, just like as a buzzword, but we can also talk about it like in more detail. Uh, and if it will make sense at some point, I think like merging semantic conventions and merging the uh, instrumentations into open telemetry is something that could be potentially uh, could potentially be done. Um, that's it. I mean, that's uh, the presentation I made. I wanted to show you two things. One is where is it? One is the set of semantic conventions we've defined as of today uh, to add uh, attribute to add specific attributes to spans uh, uh, that we needed. So like things like number of tokens that were sent in a request to OpenAI, now number of tokens that we got in response, uh, the actual prompt that was sent, the actual responses that we got. Uh, we also have some things for vector databases, for LLM frameworks, this is on our documentation, so you can also uh, take a look later. Um, and we can see like, since in every platform that I have it open in our platform, you can see like how, how the spans and traces looks like when you when you consume the you consume you consume the spans in some availability platform, and basically it's, it's a trace. Let's see if this is a, this would be a good trace. Yeah, this is not really a trace. Uh, yeah, this one might be better. So it's a trace, uh, but except for like the attributes that you usually find in spans uh, reported by Open Telemetry, we also have the prompts and completions which we thought were uh, were really important for. Uh, LM observability and also of oh, well, we don't have it, but usually you also have like a token usage. You can see it like in an open AI span. Yeah. Uh, that's that's about it. I, I have a question. Uh, yes. so first of all, nice to meet you, Nir. Uh I heard about your 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 uh, solution. So very interesting. Um as of now, you mentioned you mainly covered uh, the the usage of, of traces here and I was wondering when you were presenting I thought that maybe this could be more like a metric or even maybe there are logs that we can collect uh, from those solutions that could also um, share uh, interesting events um, so that's one my, my first question and um, the usage of traces in logs and the second question that I have is if you go back to the the details, so here you're displaying all the traces, and I think I don't I'm I'm not a, an expert on any of them for sure, but I was wondering maybe uh, as a user I may be interested to see uh, what are do some more analytics. So maybe uh, uh, an aggregation layer on top of that to say uh, how many, for example, tell me, tell me a joke about TypeScripts has been. Uh, I mean, basically do some analytics about the prompts. Uh, could be uh, uh, useful. So, have you thought about it? This is, uh, or is it going to be mainly a feature for trace loop? So, yeah. Yeah, we wanted to. So, right now we just we started with traces because this is the thing people wanted the most. And right now we see that, for example, like token usage is something we want to just report. Use the metrics API to report. It makes more sense than than using like just then sending it as traces. So, yeah, we want to also definitely send metrics and logs as well. It's part of the instrumentations we have. It's just that, yeah, we we're still a young project. And we don't have uh, only twenty four hours a day. Yeah, because I was thinking here, if you if you leave it like this and you use a collector processor that I mean have a specific collector because it will be very intensive, uh, but that will do the aggregations. Um, I think that will be very useful. I mean. I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, looking at each individual trace may, will be very useful for every uh, individuals. But I was wondering if people are more looking for analytics about the usage. Um, that will be also very powerful. Yeah, they, they do actually. One one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot actually, which reminded me is that the scale is much lower. Like it, you can't compare it to the scale you get with like if you just instrument like a microservice uh, system. You get you know uh, I don't know a thousand times more spans. Uh, in like a, in a typical system, 
And because you see the, like the, the, the trace duration, sometimes even like 16 seconds, it's the scale we probably have here is, is much lower. And this means that some of the constraints we have within like in open telemetry, we don't need to apply them here just because the, the, the constraints are different, the system is different. Yeah, thanks. And and uh, if I want to, for example, uh, you open AI chat, so you have like a uh, in when you have your app, you have a connection to the official open AI um, uh, platform. Uh, so you you request some tokens and so on, and then you will get the uh, the the details con uh, interacting with their, their their API. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I have a couple of questions, but I want to go last, like everybody else, trying to ask whatever you'd like first. Uh, I think uh, um, I just put in a question in the chat. Um, when you do observability, how um, on these um, LLMs, how do you uh, or do you support tokenization or redacting of the prompts and the responses when you log them? Yes. Um, but, uh, okay. Yeah, this was one of the things. One of the first things we considered is okay, like prompts and completions are first, like they might be a privacy concern. Some people who don't want them to be automatically traced. And second, sometimes there can be like really long, this which can also lead to problems uh, down the line. I know that some of the really platforms has like limitations on the uh, trace, uh, on the sorry, the largest attribute span attribute that they can handle. So, uh, so yeah, we. We do have an option to react uh, prompts and completions, and then we just show you spans like spans without the actual uh, text that was sent. Okay. And how easy is it to? Sorry, uh, how easy is it to integrate into frameworks that aren't Langchain or Llama Index? So we. The re like so if you don't use a Llama index or, or length chain, we also instrument uh, the OpenAI SDK. So if you just do, use the OpenAI SDK, we we uh, we instrument we monkey patch it so we can get all the all the data from uh, the calls you made to OpenAI. Uh, what we saw a lot of times is that you can I don't have like a more complex example here, but maybe I'll search a bit more. But uh, sometimes like there's a notion of like a workflow. You have like multiple requests to OpenAI, which are Together, if you have like a rack pipeline, it's a good example, right? You have a call to like some vector databases, you get vector database, you get the response, and then you call OpenAI, and then when you get the response for OpenAI, this is what you return to the user. So you have like a, a workflow, like a multi-step workflow. So if you use Llama Index or Langchain, we automatically understand how this workflow looks like, and we can create a trace from it. But if you don't have it, then you need to manually tell us, okay, this is this is like a one unit of workflow. This is the step, these are the steps within the workflow. So currently what we do is that in our SDK, like the top layer, we have uh, annotations. Uh, I can show it in the documentation maybe, where is it? Uh, we, have, we have a set of annotations where you can actually tell us the structure of your program. And this is what makes up a trace when we send it to, uh, when we create open telemetry uh, traces. So something like that. Thank you. Um, I, had a, I had a couple of questions, um, uh, but I don't know if I did. I just cut off somebody. Uh, um, right. Uh, so you, when you mentioned both the vector databases and uh, the other points of integration, uh, some of which you might be, uh, you said monkey patching or something. Uh, what's the engagement model that you foresee for this project in terms of like, are you working with these projects that you're instrumenting, uh, are they aware of this? Do they support this? Uh, are they are they instrumenting their own code and you're acting as a point of coordination using these monkey patches as a way to kind of drive those changes? Or like what, what's the, what's sort of the dynamic model of like how you're engaging with what could be quite a lot of projects as part of, as part of this project? Um, and, 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 and I guess secondly, I, I forgot to ask it before, but I ask the same question all the time, which is, uh, could you also please describe the nature of your community, uh, the governance structure for your project, and you know what someone would do if they wanted to engage technically 
uh, as a contributor with the project? Is it open for contribution? Is it merely open source? Uh, what, where, what stage of community building are you in? Uh, so things like this, uh, I'm sure folks might uh, uh, want to know. So we we have been in touch with some of the uh, so none of this existed. So if you use like OpenAI, you don't get any out of the box open threat instrumentation. Uh, we so we built everything ourselves, all the instrumentations. Um, we we are in touch with some of them, and we, and and some of their documentations lead to our our project so that people who want to use open telemetry to instrument X can discover open telemetry and use it to instrument that X. And um, I hope like it's been it, the more instrumentations we have, the more the harder and, and the faster that it is like a uh, domain uh, moves, the harder it is for us to keep up with all the changes. Like if they changing their API and they're breaking some existing behavior, then we need to fix it, and sometimes we need to support old API and new API because some people haven't migrated yet, and we want to still keep supporting them. So it's it it gets harder and harder, and we hope that at some point we can also yeah you know, get into a better level of engagement with with uh, with them, so that uh, maybe we can just like have it as part of like the at least part of the instrumentation, as you said, like be just part of the of the SDK itself. Um, for your second question for the community, so yeah, we're we're open for contributions when we get uh, we starting to get more and more uh, contributors. I think like there's a there's a high bar for contributing to to open telemetry projects in general because you need to be extremely familiar with like internals of Python or TypeScript to to understand how uh, all these monkey patches work. Like I, I've worked for it for a long time, and I still struggle with uh, some some parts of it. So I, I think I, I've seen like many people that just struggle with making making it work for them. Uh, we have a Slack, we have a Slack community uh, workspace, and uh, our repo is uh, Apache too. Um, Thanks. I would I would absolutely encourage you to uh, document some of that in the sandbox application um, uh, TLC issue. I, I noticed there's already a bunch of stuff there, but but in particular, um, uh, I'm sure the TLC members when assessing this would probably have some of the same questions I had, and then some more. You know, sort of like uh, you know, what does this look like if you're successful, right? Mm -hmm. And suddenly there's like three times as many things being instrumented. But is the process set up? Is there is the project set up to? To, to, to be resourced to, to handle that uh, or do you know is there sort of a CI CD framework that, that can that can mitigate it or probably best are you, are you working directly with the projects right so that you don't have to do it the hard way um, but but yeah any of any of that uh, uh, detail about uh, inroads you've already made at, uh, with other projects uh, similarly uh, I'm curious have you already presented or reached out to for example the um, semantic convention sig of open telemetry to get their feedback on some of the things you've done um and any of that kind of stuff would also make sense to put in there and and if we can help um uh the folks yeah. on the board, but uh I'll later others you know i uh, might open telemetry i'm sure um, um would be able to point you in the right direction as well but, uh, yeah, we, have, uh, uh, we have philip from uh, honeycomb uh, started to work with us on uh, on the pr for adding some of the semantic conventions and it's been uh, it's been a long discussion uh, ever since uh, we started this PR. So yeah. Oh, wonderful! Then then absolutely put links to that if it's not already there in the sandbox application. Don't want to don't want to see that engagement. Um, the, the last question I had is what you're showing us here with, that says trace loop. Is that part of the open source project that you're looking to uh, uh, potentially uh, join the sandbox, or is that uh, something for your company that's not part of the actual um project so we our product our commercialized product is built of two parts one is the sdk for collecting data from production applications and the other one is our platform where, where we give you tools for monitoring and evaluating llms in production so the platform is the product that we are making money out of and the sdk is is the one we open sourced and is built on open the image and this is the one we're looking to contribute back to not that, but you to CNCF. 
and is that project open source also, uh, but but licensed differently, or is no, it able to be run like in a, in an open way, like like fake an instrument, all this stuff? But can can you do things with it in the open? In other words, or is it an open SDK but a non open platform for analysis? And yeah, it's an open SDK but non open platform. I see. The brother presence uh, I had at the outset. Um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to throw in, or should we move on? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Nir, uh, for the presentation, um, and um, I look forward to seeing uh, what, what the TOC says, the TOC says, as well as the other feedback from from those on the call in the community. Thank you. Next on the agenda, uh, discuss discuss on the YouTube channel. Is that who wrote this one? That was me. That was Henrik. Oh, hey. So earlier today, I posted like 20 videos. So all the backlog log videos are up now. Um, the metadata for them needs to be updated um, either either manually or with a script that I have. I've been monkeying or hacking around with earlier this morning. Uh, but uh, we, we now should have all of the videos that have happened up until this meeting, including uh, working group meetings, unless there was one we missed from yesterday uh, last week, but um, we should have uh, all videos on. Was more, I was more uh, thinking of uh, the initiative that we thought there, there was an issue about it. So um, I'm glad you hear you say that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to have a touch base on the ideas and get uh, inputs from everyone. Uh, I was thinking uh, I have ideas, but it's maybe other people other people here has other ideas on what what we what type of videos we are expecting in this channel um and i was thinking of presenting cncf observability uh, solutions that was one other thing but also have a, like a chance where you have a, an hour or an ask me anything where you bring a maintainer on stage so which means you don't have to prepare significant content it's just like you're here and you take questions uh, and also similar what to what we do here for example um uh, with open LM metric, we can have a session where like a 10 or 20 minutes recording just to, to show the, the project uh, and post it. So then it's going to be a separate video that could be consume, consumed. Um, and last the idea that I had was maybe there are a lot of people doing fancy stuff in the observatories world, uh, having them presenting their initiative and sharing uh, their ideas, their thoughts, their, uh, yeah all the, the 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 journey they went through uh, that could be also cool to share but again that's my in, my ideas but i am really looking at for inputs for from everyone uh, to adjust uh, the type of content that could fit in the channel Don't have ideas. Um, I put a, I put a link to the existing issue from some time ago that Henrik uh, that, that was referenced just now in the meeting chat, um, uh, as well as the meeting notes um, for history. But I, I think this is a great idea. Uh, I think it's something that there's there's fertile ground as we as we said before. Um, everything from you know right now we just produce push up the videos and shortly um, if we do nothing we can turn on the service we can make a service that's ticket and the CNCF um, now has automation to just blindly push the videos. But I really think there's an opportunity to do a little bit of like, you know, even minimally like trimming the beginnings and ends, uh, having some lead in videos, uh, some summary slides or, or some kind of more organized way than just like, here's a playlist with all of the videos since forever um, with a hand curation. So I, I think anything from like the simple things to the to, to what, what you're saying with different types of content, uh, webinars and or ask me anything are all Great ideas. Um, does anyone else have ideas or passions around this? Um, I know that um, we do have Chris Larson was had expressed some interest as well. And I put together a document on how to get to our YouTube channel and do all the things. So if anyone's interested, um, we can we can enable that or bring it in uh, and add permissions and whatnot. Yeah. So Chris is was interesting. Interested in that? Okay, so I will reach out to him. And yeah, also... mostly because I had a lag on updating his videos <laughs> uh, because of the way that it was set up before. There was sort of a two-factor authentication and magic password, and it was really not what you would expect in 2020. Um, 
three from Zoom and or YouTube. But, um, uh, it's getting better, I think, with the automation. Up till now, it's been a, uh, I log in, download it, upload it, do it all manual. Um, so it's lousy. Yeah, I know, I know that journey. Um, there's also, for what it's worth, um, I forgot to mention earlier, uh, I, I forgot to, forgot to mention last week, but um, there is a tag tools repo in the CNCF. So for tools like YouTube video management or tag administrative or all manner of other stuff, um, there's actually a, a, a curated home where tags can have tools and, and and have them in a central location, particularly if they're applicable to other tags. So things we do here, you know, we could swap out a tag name. Um, you know, I also think it'll be really important to to, to have some level of, of automation that's data driven from the categories and subcategories and tags as defined by the landscape. Uh, it used to be that things like working groups, for example, only existed in one tag, but now they're across two. And so the videos from those need to be cross posted. And so, so the data model for like, what is associated with what tag, uh, is mutable and moving forward, we would expect that to, you know, there's work streams at the TOC and the tag chairs level to, to assess the ecosystem. Do we need more tags? Do we need to reduce the number of tags? You know, what's the distribution? That's That work is slated for mid-February as an, as an initial checkpoint. Uh, and and a, a, a group was launched uh, earlier today. Um, so uh, it's timely. So there'll be something to kind of feather into, I think, both to present what we're doing so that other tags um, might make use of it and also to perhaps gather more support and or resourcing and or collaborators from other tags that want to join you know, on the same set of ideas. Um, could you share that link with the, the, the common tools for the tag? That would be uh, very oh, nice. Yes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go do that. I believe it's the NCF tag. Yeah. I'll ask, but it will be in the notes, absolutely. But I'll dig it up. All right. Now. Thank you. No, thank you. Does anybody else have other ideas? Like we could do a Christmas issue, uh, not, we could do a holiday issue, or we could do a summer solstice issue, or <laughs> we could do a uh, New Year. Um, you know, we, we could have like a little special uh, hellos to the to the ecosystem, I suppose, highlighting you know things that are happening in our in our in our sector. Um, uh, I think that again, based on the discussion that we had today in the TLC and tag chairs meeting, there's a lot of opportunity um, uh, for folks to. To, to, to push forward things, particularly in this tag, um, what we're looking to recruit uh, two technical leads and uh, a third co-chair, uh, you know, as, as the number of things that, that are happening in, in observability and analytics is, is dramatically growing, not to say nothing of AI <laughs> and all the other stuff that, that is adjacent. So, um, help on it. Oh, Bartek, you had something next, I think, too. Yeah, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Did you want to talk about the uh, observability white paper rename? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah exactly. So, um... So essentially, we released white paper 1.0, and we are open for contributions. By the way, which is amazing. Um, so there are lots of issues, there are lots of to do, to dos you can help with, and so you can help reviewing as well. So um, and the process is explained there. Um, but there was one um, kind of solid question and suggestion from the community. Um, maybe white paper white paper is not like uh, inclusive inclusive name. Um, so uh, we actually have a, had a poll and we have some discussions and uh, after all, we sounds like we settled on the paper name, just. And first of all, I would just, so I guess maybe you have some objections, maybe you have some ideas, there are still, we are still open. Um, and if not, we'll just do it and that's an announcement. What do you think? For me, it's just a name, so paper is fine. Uh, I support it too. I think that um, the amount, of, the amount of energy and watts uh, that we're, <laughs> but um, but I'm glad that we 
we have ever and uh, thank you for humoring me. Um, I do want to make sure, given the yeah, uh, my job at points is to be annoying, <laughs> but um, but cool. So yeah, I mean, if 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 we're all, it sounds like you've already kind of had a poll and collected the stuff. Uh, I'll 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 I'll, I'll see my head. Um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it then. Thank you. Um, yeah. Just, cool. And thank you again for consistently driving the white paper through the course of years now. So, yeah, let's let's uh, let's let's yeah continue on this. Um, it's a good stuff. Cool. Um, the one last piece of uh, news I had, uh, I didn't prep the agenda properly. I, I'll backfill it, but um, uh, KubeCon EU. Uh, so um, uh, I'm on the. Uh, uh, as you know, we're launching an AI working group uh, that's a collaboration between Tag Runtime and this tag. Uh, and so there is a Cloud Native AI day. So there's um, the, the CFP for that is, is out uh, for the day zero uh, events in, 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 at KubeCon EU. Uh, and we will, of course, have a maintainer track. And I think that um, uh, as so many of our observability community members do hail from the EU time zones, um, uh, we should absolutely provide a way for, you know, an event or a booth or you know we, we have a lot of options depending on uh, the level of effort that community members want to invest uh everything from yeah well so um so uh, bear that in mind and if you're interested reach out on the channel uh to either myself or, or Alito or just in the channel generally generally and we can point you uh at the right folks and have a discussion on what we might want to do uh, as a community at kubecon uh one suggestion for kubecon eu uh, except of the uh, CFPs, why don't we do um, not not necessarily dinner or, or like an after drink or after I don't know just a, a one hour, two hours, three hours where we can hang out as a community all together. Uh, we did it once in Detroit. I think it was pretty cool. I think we should could be cool to do it uh, in Paris as well. I agree. I thought Detroit was a success, um, and I got at this point where, where I actually first met many of you uh, was at dinner in Detroit. Um, uh, I can't. I had been thinking also uh, uh, since then that we might actually, if if there's interest, maybe have one for us as an observability community, and then kind of like your ask me anything idea. Like we could, as a community, make ourselves available, maybe after hours, or we can organize, you know, uh, with with the, with the conference organizers about what the right place and time for that is. But a place where vendors or end users or other people that are interested but are not necessarily already engaged uh, with the observability community, you know formally uh, can come have a have a meet and greet and so like th th those seems like two separate things like right? maybe one that precedes the other or something like that but if there's interest i think both would be uh, a really great way to to grow our community and um expand our time sure. i love the idea um do you want to do you want to um just make an issue in the in the repo or something or oh mm -hmm. i can turn on discussions uh, those, those now have sort of been blessed. The TLC is using them. If folks are interested, we'll flip the bit and we can make this a discussion. That's a good point. Cool. Uh, those that those that have arrived today get to vote. Uh, do we all like this idea of having GitHub discussions, the new ones? Uh, if so, let's do it. All right, cool. One of the benefits of a, a, a lightweight process is <laughs> alacrity. So, uh, is there anything else folks want to talk about? Otherwise, we could return time to all of you. And if I don't see you all, happy holidays. And this recording Thanks. will be up much sooner than before. Cool. Happy holidays. Thanks all. Enjoy your holidays. See you. Thank you.